Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about this fun looking mechanism. So first of all, when it comes to mechanisms like that, I really like to analyze my reagents. Looking at my reagents, I have the starting material, functional group wise that is going to be some sort of an ether, and also I have sulfuric acid. Well, we know that sulfuric acid is a strong acid, which means that that is going to be a source of H+. And what does the H+, do? Well, H+, will protonate something. So, in order to start this mechanism, let's protonate something that we have in our molecule, and probably the best thing would be an oxygen. But before I go there, let's redraw my molecules like that. So, as I've mentioned, I'm going to start by protonating my oxygen. So, I will show the electron pairs on my oxygen, and I will grab that proton of sulfuric acid. In the course of this proton transfer reaction, I'm going to get a protonated intermediate that looks like this. Now, this protonated intermediate can potentially break a carbon-oxygen bond, because for any ether that has been protonated, we can consider either the right side of the molecule or the left side of the molecule as a potential living group. Which means that when I'm thinking about those two pieces as living groups, I need to analyze which of the two possible carbocations is going to be more likely. So if I do the bond cleavage like this from the left side, then what I'm going to end up with going to look like this. And that is a very bad carbocation. The carbocation that I have just formed over here, that is phenylic carbocation, and those types of carbocations, they are incredibly unstable. It might look like it's a secondary carbocation, but in reality, the stability of that carbocation due to rigidity of the molecule and pretty much lack of hyperconjugation is going to be a smidgen more stable than the primary carbocation. And we know that the primary carbocation is essentially a sign fiction. So, that means that this carbocation is a no-go for me. Well, if that carbocation was a really bad idea, what if I cleave my bond on the right side and do something like that? Well, in this case, I'm going to get a phenol and I'm also going to get a tertiary carbocation. And as we know, tertiary carbocations are perfectly fine. They are comparatively stable and they can easily form. So that is what we are going to get in this case. Now, the next thing that we are going to do when it comes to carbocations, we are always going to check for any possible carbocation rearrangements. And we see that since this is already a tertiary carbocation, the carbocation rearrangement is going to be quite unlikely. And the next thing, after the carbocation rearrangement is not an issue here, we are going to look for either possible nucleophilic attack or we are going to look for possible elimination reaction. Well, in this case, we don't really have any suitable nucleophile. The only nucleophile wannabe is going to be the sulfate anion, this species, and that is hardly a nucleophile. Which means that the only option that we have left is going to be the elimination. So, in order to achieve our elimination, we are going to pull off one of the protons that we have in the nearby position to our carbocation, and in this case, since I have three methyl groups, it doesn't matter which one I'm going to grab, so let's say I'm going to take the purple one, or if I want I can take this green one, or maybe if I wanted to I could take, I don't know, this red one over here. It really doesn't matter. So let's go with the green one. I'm going to use my sulfate anion as a conjugate base here, so this one comes in, pulls my proton, making a double bond that going to look like this. Some of you who are in the second semester of organic chemistry, or maybe some of you who are already familiar with the electrophilic aromatic substitutions, might wonder why my carbocation didn't react with the phenol. Phenol is a wonderful nucleophile in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Well, the thing is that the product with, that we got here this molecule is actually a gas, which means that it's not really going to be sitting in our reaction mixture, it will quite literally just bubble away. And when it comes to conditions like that, we also see that the original reaction had heat associated with that. That delta sign means heat. So if I have a high temperature and I'm forming one of the products that's going to be a gas, well, that guy is definitely not going to be hanging out around uh, to be able to, you know, react with something or do something else. And since the reaction has elevated temperature, the elimination is going to be thermodynamically favorable, which means that the formation of gas 
with the corresponding evolution of that gas bubbling it away from our reaction mixture is going to be incredibly favorable, which means that the electrophilic aromatic substitution here is not going to be likely. And that's all I have about this mechanism for today. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any suggestions or questions, do leave those in the comments below because I love hearing from you guys. Thank you for watching this quick tutorial till the very end. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to help promote this video and help more students see it, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.